All right, so in this video, we're going to continue moving on towards our goal of creating this view where this play button is able to scroll up. We're going to ignore this animation for now, but just that it's able to scroll up. And once we finish layer three, we'll move on to layer four. So just to show you what that's going to look like, it's going to be this play button is able to move up like that. So this is kind of like a screen, uh, a screen recording of our final goal here, okay? So that's what we're making right there. All right. So, to work on that right now, where we left off is we created this play button and it is present, but it does not scroll. So, in order for us to get it to scroll, what we did last time is we got started by representing the height or the offset of this button using a spacer that is above the button. And that spacer has a height that is equal to this value right here, play button offset. So, it has a value of 300. And 35. So what we need to do is we need to actually keep track of how far we've scrolled and use that to control the offset of this play button. Because I could have just put this play button inside of the scroll view and had it scroll with everything else, but then it would have scrolled right off the screen. By doing it this way, we actually give it the ability to stop scrolling at the top. So let's go ahead and look at how we can do that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to need to introduce something called Geometry Reader. So Geometry Reader is essentially something that lets us uh, keep track of you know, our, our progress in this scroll. I mean, it, 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 is, it does a lot of different things, but the way we're using it is uh, it's going to help us. It's a closure that's going to help us understand where we are in the scrolling process. So what we'll do is we're going to take inside scroll, scroll view here. I'm going to create a geometry an instance of Geometry Reader. Okay, And inside of Geometry Reader, since it itself is a closure, I need to access that closure. And this, in my case, I'm going to write it as geo. So we're going to be able to reference uh, the geometry reader using geo in the rest of this closure. And this geo, we need it to return some sort of view in order for us to use it the way we want to use it. So in, in our case, we're going to use it to return an optional view of type any view. And the reason I made it optional is because, to be honest, we're actually going to just return nil. So we're not going to we're not actually going to create anything. Um, we're just going to use this this area or this closure to keep track of uh, our offset as we scroll. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up here and say play button offset. It's not going to be a um, it's no longer going to be just a variable. We're going to call this a state variable. And the reason we call it a state variable is because when it's a state variable, it's something that uh, we're able to modify. So when this becomes a state variable, what happens is every time it changes, anywhere where we've used it, such as down here, anywhere we use it, it's, it's always going to be tracked. So if, if this number happens to change, then this will also change. So if this number becomes 100, then suddenly the space will become 100. That number, the updating, that automatic listening, is the product of us putting the word state up here. So if I were to come inside here now, what I can do is I can create a temporary constant called this offset. Okay, this we're back in the geometry reader within the scroll view of layer two. So if I say let this offset, it's going to be equal to the frame of geometry inside of the global, um, the global view, and we can access the offset with the um, by looking for the min y property of the geometry frame. And then, once I've found it, I can actually come here and say the play button offset will be equal to this offset. Now it's going to give me an error because it wants me to write self. All right. Now, what that's going to do, if I hit resume, is now every time I start scrolling, this value of play button offset, so initially it was, it was uh, instantiated with a value of 335. But by the time this view came across to creating this geometry reader, it updated that value from 335 to whatever the offset was in our scroll. So now, if you watch, I can scroll and it keeps track of where we were. Now we wanted it to be all the way down here, right? So what we can do is we can scroll back down here over to layer three where we said the spacer above play. We said 
the spacer height is just equal to the offset. Or we said, we said it's equal to play button offset. But now it's roughly 280 pixels too short. So what I can say is I can just say it's equal to that offset plus, let's just say 100, and that should bring it down. 100 pixels, uh, maybe 200, maybe 300. It's, we're kind of just looking for something we like, you know? So 300 looks pretty good to me. So what I can do now is I can start scrolling. Sure enough, it's doing exactly what we asked of it. It's continuing to update accordingly. So to take this even a step further, what we might even like to do is maybe even put an extra shadow on top of that play button. So for that play button, wherever, right here, we can come here, we can put a shadow. It made it nice and easy for us. So I'm just gonna put at the end, I'm gonna say shadow radius of 10. Let's take a look at what we, what we get. Uh, it's not that visible to be honest with you. So let's make it 20. So we get, it's a little better. So we can see it's a little bit thicker of a shadow in here. And that's looking pretty good. So the next thing we need to do is we need to stop this button from scrolling off the screen. So what we can do is let's go ahead and keep track. So let's go ahead and keep track of how far this is going up. So let's go down here. And we said we have layer, layer zero was our background, layer one, was our image here. Layer two was the scrollable content. Layer three was the play button that now scrolls with the scrollable content, but it itself is simply just on top of the scrollable content. Okay. And let's go ahead and let's close layer two. Let's look at layer three. We're going to minimize that too. We're going to just create a temporary layer and we're going to call this the um, you know, observer layer, just something that we can use for ourselves, okay? And in the observer layer, I'm just going to create a V stack, and inside that V stack, I'm going to create text. And what I'm doing is that text, I'm going to make it have the value of play button underscore offset. I'm going to push it all the way to the top, and I'm going to make it yellow. Foreground color dot yellow. So this area right here, this observer layer now, it's showing me exactly how far, uh, where the geometry reader thinks our offset is. So it says when I, have, when I haven't scrolled at all yet, it thinks I've scrolled 44 pixels. And that likely is just because there's the height of this safe space here. So it's saying I'm, 44, I'm already 44 pixels scrolled through the screen, but that's just probably accounting for this right here. So what that's really what we're really saying then is that when when we're at rest, when this thing has not scrolled at all, we want this spacer's height to be equal to 300 plus 44 at rest. And as I scroll up, you'll see that number slowly change. As I make my way through. And realistically, I probably want this play button to stop right about here. I don't want it to go too much further. At this point, I want the scrollable content to continue upwards, and I want the play button to stay where it is. So what I can do is I can take note of the number at which I roughly want the play button to stop. Let's just say it's a nice even 300, okay, or negative 300. So what I can do is I can go back to the scroll view, okay, and I can say, I can put an if state, and I can say, rather than continuing to update where I've scrolled, and forcing the play button to continue scrolling upwards, what I can do is I can say, continue updating where I've scrolled until I reach negative 300. Anything past negative 300, let's just call it negative 300 and call it a day. So I'll say, if this offset is greater than, let's say, uh, negative 300, then we need to do one thing, and if it's not so if otherwise else then let's do something else so if it's greater than 300 then self dot play button underscore offset is going to be equal to this offset but if if the, if the offset is less than negative 300 meaning it's negative 301 negative 302 etc these are all these seem like bigger numbers but remember we're getting technically getting smaller it's getting more and more negative so if it's less than negative 300 
and we'll just call it negative 300 and leave it at that. So what that means is I can scroll up, 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 and then all of a sudden it just stops. And everything else starts keeps going around it. And it resumes. It picks right back up at the end there. So we tell it continue to update until we hit negative 300 and then that's it. We're going to call it a day right there. And that's exactly what we're hoping for. So now this play button is doing exactly what we wanted from it. So the next thing we need to do is animate that play button and that animation we will get to in the next video. All right. See you guys in the next video. In the next video we will likely wrap up layer four as well, but at most it'll be one more video. All right. See you guys then.